Hi, I'm Alyssa Luffy and welcome to my third video for Lupus Awareness Month. I rather ironically caught a bug or something and have been out of commission for a week, which is why this video is a bit late. These last two videos would be in subjects that closely relate to lupus but are not specifically about it and can actually apply to anyone who has a chronic illness. This episode will be about the spoon theory, which is a useful analogy to explain to healthy people what people with chronic illnesses go through on a daily basis. So the story goes, there's this woman called Christine Miserandino, and I'm very sorry if I'm pronouncing her name wrong, and her friend, and they're meeting up in a cafe. Christine's friend, kind of out of the blue, asks her what it's really like to have lupus. Completely at a loss as to how to explain to someone who is basically healthy what it's like to have an illness that's always present, Christine looks down at the table and gets an idea. So she grabs the spoons off of her table, and then goes around grabbing the spoons off of other tables, and hands them to her friend. Okay, you have lupus and that's the energy you have for the day, Christine tells her friend. Count them. Her friend has 12 spoons. Christine's friend jokingly asks for more, but Christine shuts that down. When you have a chronic illness, you have to be aware of how much energy you have at the start of the day so you can get an idea of what you can get done. The 12 spoons was the energy Christine's friend had to spend that day. Christine asks her to go through her daily routine. Her friend starts to list off all the things she would normally do, get up, have a shower, get dressed, etc. Christine stops her and says, no, you don't just get up. You might have slept badly and your joints will be stiff. Getting out of bed costs a spoon. And she takes away a spoon from her friend. Christine explains that next she would have to have breakfast, otherwise she wouldn't be able to take her medication. She couldn't just have a shower. All that stretching and bending that early in the morning takes a lot of energy, never mind getting dried as well. She can't just get dressed either. She has to think about if she's able to do it at buttons or if her fingers are stiff or if she has a fever that day she has to dress warm. If her hair was falling out, she had to figure out how to make herself presentable that day. Everything costs spoons. Going through all this before her friend had even gotten to work, she only had six spoons left. Christine explained that she had to think very hard about how she was going to spend the rest of her spoons that day. When your spoons are gone, you can't get any back until you've had a chance to rest and recharge. Christine told her friend that you always have to think about the possibility that you might come down with an infection or a cold, which can seriously affect your supply of spoons. Then she talked her friend through the rest of her day. Skipping lunch would cost a spoon. Standing on the train or being at her computer for too long, anything like that, they all cost spoons. Her friend was forced to make choices and seriously think about things. Hypothetically, she would have to sacrifice running errands if she wanted to eat dinner that night. And by the end of the day, Christine's friend only had one spoon left. If she cooked, she wouldn't have enough energy to wash up the dishes afterwards. If she went out for a meal, she might not be able to drive back safely. Christine explained that she was probably so nauseous by the end of the day she wouldn't want to eat anything anyway. Her friend decided to have some soup, because it was easy. Christine told her that by this point it was probably only about 7 in the evening and she had one spoon for the rest of the night. She could do something for herself, or she could do chores, or clean up her flat, but she couldn't do everything. Her friend began to get upset. She asked Christine if she had to do that every single day. Christine told her that she did. Some days are worse than others. Some days you have spoons to spare. Some days you have less. But you could never lose track of how many spoons you had. And that's the spoon theory. I found this story very helpful in explaining to people why I can't do certain things or explain the choices I have to make during the day. I don't have unlimited energy and I can't just up and do things because I feel like it. I might not be able to do things if people ask me last minute because I might just not have the spoons to spend. It's not just useful for explaining to other people though, it's a very useful tool for myself. It helps me measure my energy better and gives me a good idea of the things I'm capable of doing on any given day. It's entered not just my internal language, saying to myself, OK, I have a few extra spoons to spend on this thing I want to do, but my everyday language too. My boyfriend knows that if I say I'm running low on spoons, that we need to make decisions as to what things need done and what can be left until another day, like making dinner or what chores need done. It's just a very handy metaphor to explain a very complicated idea, to both myself and others. I want to emphasise that this is not just a useful tool in explaining your energy levels to others, it's a very good way to visualise it for yourself. I used to basically just use up my energy when I had it, 
just wanting to get things done when I could rather than thinking about conserving energy or what I was actually able to get done. It was a road to disaster thinking like that and I ended up very frustrated with myself when I wasn't able to do things. I hope this has helped you in some way, either to explain to other people what's going on with you or help you to understand yourself, or just give you a better idea of the kind of choices and sacrifices a person with a chronic illness has to make on a daily basis. Next time will be my final episode for Lupus Awareness Month, and will be in a topic that doesn't just affect people with lupus, but a large number of people in the world. I hope to see you next time for my episode on depression. I'm a little loopy, and thank you for watching.